What's up, Lore Masters? This is going to be the second to last video breaking down DS9's In the Pale Moonlight. If you haven't seen the previous editions, click in the top right hand corner or in the description below, as the rest of this won't make a lot of sense if you don't. Let's just get into it. The last time we left off, the Holosmith had created the fake program that was going to be given to the Senator. Sisko would go about the business of preparing everything that was involved in having the Senator arrive, including getting the Optolithic Rod ready, as well as other accommodations. During this time, the Holosmith would be sent back to his quarters and sequestered there. Garrick stating that he was going to visit the man very shortly. If you haven't, I would suggest re-watching this episode and heavily focus on the next scene after everything up to this point. There is a very critical piece of dialogue that is often ignored. Sisko ultimately tries to console himself by admitting that, in the end, he's off the hook. Remember, Starfleet Command signed off on the entire operation. This, of course, makes sense, however, the implications of it are devastating. Think about it. Starfleet Command agreed to fool the Romulan Star Empire into believing an attack is on the way in order to ensure the Romulans enter the war. This is so that Starfleet might actually have a chance of winning. Either Starfleet Command has become extremely desperate, or Section 31 had a hand in helping out the good captain. Irregardless, this dialogue would ultimately mean that it wasn't just the soul of one officer, but that of the entirety of Starfleet Command. The entity that was created to explore new worlds, to seek out new life and civilizations, when it's pinned against the wall, it sinks into the mud and does what has to be done to ensure its own survival, even at the cost of all of its values that it once held. With that dour realization out of the way, looking back at the operation, it is very telling how accustomed to espionage and underhanded scheming Sisko becomes at the end of this episode. When Garrick mentions he will be sneaking onto the Senator's ship to get information on the Dominion, Sisko doesn't bat an eye. The captain agrees to allow a former Cardassian spy to sneak onto another nation's ship, hack their systems, and gain information on another enemy. There's an infinite number of ways this should be raising all kinds of alarms, and we'll see them at a later point, but Sisko just misses it, or he ignores it. It's just ironic to see how the man has fallen, that he doesn't even recognize right from wrong. The meeting between Vrenak and Sisko goes as expected. The senator is excessively smug, Sisko ignoring most of his quips. The Romulan brings up fantastic reasons for why the Star Empire shouldn't enter into the war. Dominion shipyards are operating at 100% capacity, the Federation is still rebuilding. The Jemadar are being bred at an enormous rate, and Starfleet and the Klingons are having to do it the old-fashioned way. The Federation is even looking to sign peace accords, everyone sees it. Plainly stated, Starfleet is losing. Not to be overzealous here, but Bashir is showing to still be right on his suggestions in statistical probabilities. Though, after all the posturing is done, they do get down to the nitty gritty, with Sisko giving the optolithic rod to the senator, and Vrenak calling him out on it being a fake at the end of the day. The self-righteous, green-blooded individual promises to expose Starfleet for who they are and what they had done. And of course, most everyone knows how this ends. The senator's ship is destroyed. Let's pause a moment. Previously in the episode, there was a discussion on the uses of biomimetic gel, that it could be used for cloning, for medical miracles, and for bombs. Throughout this miniseries, I've been discussing how Garrick had intended to kill the Senator all along. What if the biomimetic gel wasn't necessarily only for the Cardassian to barter with, but to use as that bomb? I know I discussed in the past how he may have been keeping it in a storage facility, but a commenter pointed out that some of it could have been used for such a purpose. That he intended all along to use the biomimetic gel as a weapon against the Romulans. We don't have a lot of information on the gel, but you could theorize that perhaps it's hard to scan for and thus would make a great weapon. It would explain why it can't be given out so easily by the Federation, along with the cloning and other issues. How perfect would it be that not only did Sisko help ensure the Senator was killed, but supplied Garrick with all of the required elements to ensure that that assassination went smoothly? It'd almost be like poetry. After the Senator was killed and Sisko realized what occurred, the Captain would rush in, probably ready to put Garrick into the med bay. But the Cardassian would use his final gambit, his final argument, showing that the Romulans would ultimately enter into the war and then reminding Sisko that all of this was his idea. That Sisko knew that Garrick could do things that he couldn't. 
and it was all worth it. While I loathe the battle that is going to occur with CBS and myself, I'm going to go ahead and play this bit of the episode in its full measure. Let's take a look at the argument being used against someone who lied, who cheated, who covered up the crimes of other men, and someone who will ultimately be able to live with it. You killed him. That's right. That's what you planned to do all along, isn't it? You knew the data rod wouldn't hold up to scrutiny. You just wanted to get him on the station so that you could plant a bomb on his shuttle. It wasn't quite that simple. I did have hopes that the rod would somehow pass inspection, but I suspected that Tolar may not have been up to the task. And what about Tolar? Did you kill him too? Think of them both as tragic victims of war. <clears throat> if you can allow your anger to subside for a moment, you'll see that they did not die in vain. The Romulans will enter the war. There's no guarantee of that. Oh, but I think that there is. You see, when the Tal Shiar finishes examining the wreckage of Renak's shuttle, they'll find the burnt remnants of a Cardassian optolithic data rod which somehow miraculously survived the explosion. After painstaking forensic examination, they'll discover that the rod contains a recording of a high-level Dominion meeting at which the invasion of Romulus was being planned. And then they'll discover that it is a fraud! Oh, I don't think they will. Because any imperfections in the forgery will appear to be a result of the explosion. So, with a seemingly legitimate rod in one hand, and a dead senator in the other, I ask you, Captain, what conclusion would you draw? That Vrenak obtained the rod on Sukara, and that the Dominion killed him to prevent him from returning to Romulus with it. Precisely. And the more the Dominion protests its innocence, the more the Romulans will believe they're guilty because it's exactly what the Romulans would have done in their place. That's why you came to me. Isn't it, Captain? Because you knew I could do those things that you weren't capable of doing. Well, it worked. And you'll get what you want. A war between the Romulans and the...